Hey, this is Donovan for Donovan Watches Movies. Thank you so much for checking out my second video of my year advance Oscar predictions for the 90th Annual Academy Awards. On Monday, I looked at Best Supporting Actress and where I think that's going to go. And today, I'm looking at that category's male counterpart. This is also the category I usually do the worst with, especially year in advance. <laughs> I have no idea where this category is going. Uh -huh. So be warned. Keep in mind, I'm only looking at movies that are set for distribution in the United States and are more or less guaranteed to be hitting by the end of the year. As for movies that are not yet confirmed for U.S. distribution or are on somewhat shaky ground as to whether or not they will hit this year, I will have a video about those movies coming up after I'm finished with my actual year in advance predictions. Be sure to let me know who you think will get a Best Supporting Actor nomination in the comments. Behold, the five men who probably won't end up with Supporting Actor nominations by year's end. Number five, Rob Morgan for Mudbound. Now, I discussed in my Supporting Actress video that this movie got raves at Sundance and that Netflix picked it up. Of course, it's still too early to know whether or not Netflix will be a pro or con this season because have they learned their lesson from Beast of No Nation? That's the big question here. But assuming that they have and assuming that they will put a lot of muscle into the awards push for Mudbound, I think it can get some acting nominations in addition to the Best Picture nomination. And category placement for this movie is still kind of up in the air as far as I know. But I have Rob Morgan going supporting, while I have Garrett Hedlund, Jason Mitchell, and Carey Mulligan all going lead. I have Hedlund, Mitchell, and Mulligan all going lead, more or less because they are bigger names within the film industry than Blige and Morgan are. Of course, Blige is bigger than any of them in name recognition alone. But in the world of film, she's still kind of breaking out. Anyway, this is Dee Reese's follow-up to The Lovely Pariah, which was a film that really got overlooked in award season, I think. Uh, the lead actress in that film, Adipra Odier, was incredible. She's also been incredible in films like 12 Years a Slave, and she was also very solid in The Big Short. She's a chameleon-like actor, but Getting back to Mudbound, I think Dee Rees is due for a really big mainstream breakthrough moment, and I think this could be it, and I think Rob Morgan can come along for the ride. Number four, Army Hammer for Call Me By Your Name. Of course, this is the Sundance breakout about a gay relationship between an older teenager and a young adult. Army Hammer plays the older of the two, there could be awards love for this movie. It is from Luca Guadagnino. His movies have not really taken off as awards darlings the way that a lot of people have wanted them to. If this is his big breakout, I think Hammer will come along for the ride. On a less Oscar-related note, I can't figure out which Guadagnino movie I'm looking more forward to, this or Suspiria. Call Me By Your Name is about a gay relationship. Suspiria has Tilda Swinton and Dakota Johnson. But yeah, I think Army Hammer will get the nomination, and depending on how the film is received, I think he could be a threat for the win, but I'm getting ahead of myself because, well, I'm getting ahead of myself anyway because it's only March. Number three, Ed Harris for Mother. Yeah, I think Darren Aronofsky's drama is going to go a really long way with the Academy. I think this will be his most embraced film to date. As of right now, his 2010 effort, Black Swan, is his biggest achievement within the Motion Picture Academy. But Mother has the potential to be even bigger within the Academy. For one thing, and I guess you can consider this a hint for how I feel about other categories, this movie has the potential to get nominations in all four acting categories. As for Ed Harris, they've recognized him before. I, I think this will be like an Oscar comeback for him. Number two, Mark Rylance for The Kidnapping of Edgardo Mortara. So this is a Steven Spielberg pick that was written by Tony Kushner. We all know what happened the last time they teamed up. It is in pre-production right now, but I do believe this will get finished in time to compete. Of course, Mark Rylance won the Academy Award in this category for Bridge of Spies, which was Spielberg's 2015 film about the Cold War. 
I think you will return for this film about a boy who is forcibly raised as a Christian, and then there's a lot of religious conflict, and Rylance actually plays the Pope in this movie. Frankly, this sounds a lot more interesting to me than Bridge of Spies, if nothing else. Number one, Kenneth Branagh for Dunkirk. Like I said, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Dunkirk is a very big question mark this award season. You have people thinking it's going to sweep, and others thinking it's not going to be an Oscar thing at all. Of course, Christopher Nolan's directing has a lot to do with why people are predicting this, and why people aren't predicting it as well. His last film was 2014's Interstellar. There was a lot of hype, like not just hype, like this could be his Oscar moment type hype leading up to the initial press screenings for the film. The people saw the movie and it was a different story after that. But Nolan is doing a World War II film. Even if you believe that he is not trying to bait the Academy with this, it's a World War II movie, which means they'll be paying a little bit more attention than they would be otherwise. And it's Kenneth Branagh. He scored nominations for writing, directing, and acting, but has yet to win any of them. He also leads and directs the Murder on the Orient Express remake that will be hitting theaters before the end of the year. I'm not sure if he has the biggest supporting role in this, as far as I know I think Tom Hardy probably does, but considering what he has on his plate this year, Branna could have enough momentum to be the one nominee from this movie and ultimately win the gold. So, my picks for Best Supporting Actor in alphabetical order are Kenneth Branagh for Dunkirk, Army Hammer for Call Me By Your Name, Ed Harris for Mother, Rob Morgan for Mudbound, and Mark Rylance for The Kidnapping of Edgardo Mortara. And of course, those are not the only contenders that we have to think about. In addition to a lot of people, we have Woody Harrelson for The Glass Castle, Christian Mackay for The Leisure Seeker, Killian Murphy for Dunkirk, Tom Hardy for Dunkirk, and Tom Hanks for The Circle. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video. I'm going for just 10 likes this time around. And of course, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Thanks again, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.